Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marillo. I'm always excited. I feel honored when uh, uh, you out there uh, decide to watch these videos. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise God. These videos are made to educate the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. I know my grace. My grace. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and many other things, too. Praise God. And it's all good things. Praise the Lord. When you're behind the pulpit, you got to fly right. Praise the Lord. You got to fly right. Uh, I heard a mighty man of God say, and uh, I'm going to say his name. I heard Apostle Thompson say that uh, the higher you go, the cleaner you got to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's go high today in the Lord and let's receive some clean word. Amen. Praise God. With every head bow and every eyes closed, Let's go to the throne. That's what we do before we release the word of God here in this pulpit. Gracious Father, we come before you and we thank you for this day. This day is the day that you have made for us and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we make a quality decision. We are tired of carrying anxiety in our mind. Father God, we renounce anxiety, worry. You hear me? In the name of Jesus right now. Anxiety, worry, got to go. And how we do that? By renouncing it. And, and now we make a quality decision to live in our now. Because you're a now God. Your faith is now. Faith is now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for hearing our prayer. Allow us to hear the word of God today. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say amen. It is our custom. We give God an applause. Clap your hands, all you people out of the book of uh, Psalms, and then we surrender to the Holy Spirit. Now let's receive knowledge. <clears throat> Amen. We're going back to the book of Exodus, please. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, praise the Lord. In Exodus 15, amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. In Exodus 15, the last time we were together, that's Rolo. Well, well, the last time we were together, uh, we were in verse, we left off verse 6. Because he kept us in one and two, and, and really we articulated two, and we spoke about, uh, praise the Lord, uh, let me go back to my notes, please, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we talked about uh, the Lord is my strength and my song. We understand what Exodus 15 is, is a composition that uh, God had Moses write, uh, Moses composed this song, praise the Lord. And then, of course, and that's 1 through 20. Then, of course, 20 and 21, Miriam. You know who Miriam is? Moses' sister, Aaron's sister. Praise the Lord. Miriam, she composed those two verses of song too. And then the Lord told me, you know, son, tell my people to start composing something for me. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> and I thought of myself, like, right? Sound for you? He goes, yeah. Why haven't you written a letter to my son Jesus telling him how much you love him? Ooh. Ooh. I've never done that. Has anybody here done that? Write a letter. Well, we're going to do that. In your own time, I want you to write. Because when you write a letter, okay, praise the Lord. You know what that letter, what that does, the letter? When you write down something for someone special, it has a significant impact on that person and on you. That's why we give birthday cards. That's why we give um, uh, gratitude cards. Thank you. Well, it's time that you and I give Jesus a thank you card. All right? Okay. And then what's, what we're going to do is we're going to buy him a card or write him a letter, put it in an envelope, close it. Seven days later, you're going to go back to that envelope or that car, open it up, read it, and put it somewhere visible and see what's going to happen to you. Praise the Lord. These are directions the Holy Spirit is giving you through this pulpit. All right? Why am I going to write a letter to Jesus? Well, okay, let's do it again. Because when you take time, when you take time, everything is time. That's why it's important for us. I started this service or this teaching and prayer 
by saying that we need to become a now person. Now person. Now person. Say it with me. Now person. That means you give yourself to your now. Where are you right now? You're in the house of God. You shouldn't be thinking about anything else. Praise the Lord. When you're driving, you should be giving yourself to your now while you're driving. That's why we have so many people driving self-conscious and it causes accident because they're not paying attention. They're not aware. They're not alert. Praise the Lord, somebody. Because they're not in there now. Their body, we're in Florida, right? Their body may be in Florida, but their mind is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we need to get it together now, family. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody help me praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is how he tells me, the Holy Spirit told me, this is how you get rid of anxiety, worry, you know, stress. It's like a person living in the past. Can never get into their future. Because they're always thinking about the past. Now think about this. Your physical body is in the now. How do you know that? God, because when you look in the mirror, you see gray hair and you see that you've gotten older. I get no amens in here, only one. All right. So your physical body understands that he's always or she is always in the now. Why don't you train your mind to be in the now? Praise the Lord. Okay. So it's time to write Jesus a letter. It's time to do new things so that we can move forward. Praise the Lord. Because when you take time, see what it says? Take time. See what he's saying? Take time to write down something about someone special that can have a significant impact on that person and on you. That you took time out. You gave me, you don't understand, when you folks give me a, a card, any time, pastor appreciation, whatever, happy birthday, or Merry Christmas, it, it touches me. My wife was sitting in the front. I have a room, a, a training room in my secret place room where I study and I train physically and spiritually. And I have all the cards that you folks have given me. You heard her say that's right. Because it means something to me. You took time out to think of me. So imagine when we do this for Jesus, how he's going to feel. Somebody praise him right now. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Time to do something new. All right. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to go to Exodus 15. That's where we left off. Exodus 15, and I believe it was verse 6, if I'm not mistaken. So, Pastor, what am I going to say in that letter? Tell them how much you love them. Is that hard? I, I mean, I'm looking straight at Daddy Don. I know he can do that. I know he can. Daddy Don's letter probably going to be really big. <laughs> You know, just tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him that you appreciate the breath that you breathe. Tell him that you appreciate everything he's given you in your life. All good things come from him. See, so it's time now to retrain this mind and focus on the now. On the good of the now. Come on. Okay, we need to cry out to the Lord, and we don't do that enough. We need to cry out to the Lord. We don't do it enough. All right. Well, in Exodus chapter 15, yes, Holy Spirit, Exodus 15, chapter 15, verse 6, I think it is. Okay, great. <clears throat> well, let's do this. Let's read. Uh, can I? Okay. Okay, let's go to 3. Let's go to verse 3. Remember, we, we, we stood like two the, two, the last two times I met you, we stood in verse 2, 1 and 2. You know, the Lord is my strength. And I sing a song, and then we, and then we discover that the reason why, uh, praise the Lord, we sing a song to the Lord is because we want to tell the Lord he's our reason, reason for singing. The reason, the, the reason why you have a voice and you can say something to him, <laughs> that's beautiful. Praise the Lord. So in verse 3, here we go. And uh, verse 3 says, I'm reading out of New Living Translation. The Lord is my warrior Yahweh. His name, his name. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is a warrior. Semicolon. Yahweh is his name. So in the King James it says, the, the Lord is a, a man of war. Right? Man of war says, man of war. Okay, the Lord is a man of war which that means that he fights your battles. Now, what qualifies him 
to fight your battles? Let me show you. Well, first of all, he's God. Verse 6 will give you the answer to that. Verse 6 now. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Praise the Lord. Your right hand, comma, O Lord, comma, is glorious in power, period. Your right hand, comma, O Lord, smashes the enemy. So everything that has attacked you, guess who has got it out of the way for you? Okay? So we don't need to be worrying. As long as we know the truth. See, the truth is meant to set us free. The truth is meant to give us confidence and trust and hope. In whom? In our Redeemer. Praise the Lord. He's our Redeemer. All right? So the Lord's right hand is a symbol. Write it down if you're taking note. The Lord's right hand is a symbol of his authority. And the Lord's hand, the Lord's right hand. Where's Jesus sitting at? At the right. And the Lord's right hand and right arm is a symbol of authority. And direct involvement with his people. So when he uses this in scripture, your right hand, O Lord, your right hand, O Lord, your right hand, O Lord. Smashes the enemy. He's talking about, I'm involved in your situation. I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you. I know, I know you have fallen short. I know you sin. But I love you, says the Lord. I'm your father. I love you. Repent. And forgive yourself because I already forgave you. I wish somebody hear that. Amen. Repent. And now forgive yourself. See, now you're coming out. Because when, when we make mistakes and we sin, you know how, what our mind does? It works with the enemy. And now the only thing I can think about, I, 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 I wish I had someone here to understand what Pastor's saying is, is the sin that I did, the error that I did. So now that sin keeps me from being in my now. Because you're not sinning now, yesterday, now, today, 24 hours, every second, every minute. You're not doing that same sin. Family, listen to what the Lord is saying to you. So there's strategies and things to, to, to bombard our head, our mind. See, God doesn't want your mind to be a battleground. He wants your mind to be a playground. And once you know the word of God and the truth, then now you can say this or do this. <sighs> I feel a lot. I know the truth now. So the Lord's right hand is a symbol of his authority and direct involvement with his people. Praise the Lord. Now, if you go to Exodus 15, verse 12, go to verse 12. You're in six now, right? Go to verse 12. <laughs> verse 12. He says, you raise your right hand and the earth swallows our enemy. You raise your right. Now, now you got truth. Now you know what God is doing for you. Okay, you can tell him, oh, God fights my battle. And, and, and the person says, oh, yeah, well, how does, he, how does God fight your battle? With his right hand. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. With his right hand. He protects me with his right hand. His right arm is my strength. Praise the Lord. Amen. You raise your right hand and the earth swallows our enemy. Verse 13, please. By the way, uh, the title of this teaching is With Your Unfailing Love, you lead. Verse 13. With your unfailing love, you lead the people you have redeemed. So who lives? Why are you in victory? Because of your Redeemer. 
Who's your redeemer? JC. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So now, we go to Psalm. Go to Psalm. Let's go to, let's go to Psalms and we'll, we'll stay there a little bit. Go to Psalms chapter 74. In Psalms chapter 74, verse 11. <clears throat> This is good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 74, 74, verse 11. Praise the Lord. Amen. The psalmist says, Why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. Destroy them. Destroy who? Those that are coming against you. Because the Lord protects you with his right hand. His right hand is authority. Praise the Lord. His right hand is authority. Praise the Lord. His right hand is is authority. Why withdraw thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of the bosom, of thy bosom. Praise the Lord. In other words, those that are coming against me, take them out. Take them out. Praise the Lord. Take them out. Take them out. Praise God. Take them out. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Take them out. <laughs> okay. Psalm chapter 17. Verse 7. Psalm 17. Psalm chapter 17. Verse 7. Here we go again. He says, show me your unfailing love and wonderful ways. How many of us here really has gotten personal with our Lord and tell the Lord that? Some of us don't even talk to him, do we? Do we acknowledge him at least? Does anybody acknowledge God only when you come to church you acknowledge him? Does anybody acknowledge him <laughs> on his own time, on your own time? Remember, it's just like writing a letter. In fact, let me give you some insight. You've been writing a letter to God for the longest. Every time you pray to him, that's writing him a letter. So you need to take time and tell him to show you his unfailing love, and he will, in a wonderful way. But your mighty power, you rescue. Those who seek refuge from their enemies. Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. See, you don't understand. God's giving you new things for this new year. But we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to give up what we've been doing. Our physical body has been in the now, but our mind has been in the past. Or our mind is focused on, oh, I got to take care of this. I got to do this. You can't. You cannot do that. You have to give yourself to your now. You deal with that when you get to it. We're not saying for you to become forgetful and put in the back burner. Oh, I'm going to follow this. And, and No, you got to take care. You got to do what you got to do. When I first started, before I got on the pulpit, I told you what happened to me yesterday going to Melbourne. Now, only the reason why I'm telling you, yeah, I made a mistake, but I was on a mission for God. Blue Brothers ain't got nothing over me, brother. I was in a, I was in a mission for God. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And not only I, but those that were with me. Pastor Virgilio was with me. Uh, and he, you know, we, we were in a mission for God. 
Praise the Lord. His power, his right hand, rescue you. And if you seek him, if you seek him to rescue you, he will. Everything you need, it's in him. And guess, and guess where he lives? He lives inside of you. So you have to go into it. Everybody, you see what you hear what the Lord is saying? You have to go into your now to bring it out. Praise the Lord. Okay, so now let's go to Psalm 21. Psalm 21, verse 8. You're only a couple of pages away. Praise the Lord. Psalm 21, <clears throat> verse 8. And he says, you will capture all your enemies, your strong right hand will cease all who hate you. <clears throat> if anybody say to you, well, there is no hell, read them verse 9. You will throw them in a flaming furnace when you appear. <laughs> The Lord will consume them in his anger. Look what it says. Fire will devour them. Let me get three amen. Amen, amen, and amen. I don't know about you, but I feel like Ringo Starr. No, 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 no. I don't like it no more. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. The right hand of God is a symbol of his authority. That is very important. You must leave today. Those hearing me out there, you must understand what the right hand of God is. It's a symbol of his authority and direct involvement with his people. If you call yourself a son or a daughter of God, you are his people. He's telling you right now, he has a direct involvement with you. The problem with us, you heard what I said? I didn't say him. I said us, is that we ignore and, and we do it subconsciously because we're not in our now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bang that nail right into your heart. We're not in our now. We're in everywhere else. Yet, you look in the mirror, your body's in the now. I didn't have gray hair. I didn't, where did I lose my hair? What? Whoa, whoa, wow, I've gotten older, hey. Your body is in your now. Your body's not in denial. It's your mind. Your mind is in denial. And because your mind is in denial, and your mind is running the show, then your spirit is weak. Now give it the word of God. And allow the impartation of the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. Some of us are so much in denial. You know what we say? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Oh, boy. Okay. I got to read 10. You will wipe their children from the face of the earth. They will never have a descendants. Praise the Lord. Go to Isaiah. We got to move, guys. Let's go to Isaiah. Time goes so fast. Isaiah 41.13. Isaiah 41.13. Isaiah 41.13. The, Isaiah, the chapter is 41, verse 13. Praise God. What a dramatic way God delivers us. Can I get a better amen than that? What a dramatic way with his right hand. Praise the Lord. Here, you think you've been doing it. Come on now. We got to get, we got to humble ourselves and hear the truth. When you hear the truth, you have to respect the truth. But you never can receive the truth if you're in denial. So you can't, you got to come out of denial. Somebody say that. I'm coming out of denial. I'm coming out of denial. No more denial. I want to do the things right. I want to live right. Praise the Lord. 
what a dramatic way the Lord delivers us. Just like he delivered the Hebrew people from Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. Right there, and read Exodus 15. He delivered them from the Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army still exists. And he's delivering us from our Pharaoh army that is coming against us. Amen? Okay, where, where did I say to go? Isaiah 41, right? Isaiah, all right, I'm going to be there. In blink, I'll be there. 41, 41, 13, help me. For I hold you by your right hand. Oh, my God. Everybody look at me, please, in the name of Jesus. Your pastor's talking to you. You are a son and a daughter of God. That's what's pressing. And he's my father. He's your father. And look how he holds us. I remember being held like this by my dad. How many of us can remember somebody you loved when you were small, them holding you by hand? I remember my mom holding me by hand. My father holding me by hand. For I hold you by hand. Your right hand. Listen to me. Listen to me in the spirit. He's given us authority too. The right, I told you before, the right hand represent is a symbol of authority. Praise the Lord. Say that with me. What's in my father is in me. And what's in my savior is in me. Who's your savior? Jesus. Well, 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 Pastor, how is he your savior? Well, let's get into this right now because I got to close up. Praise the Lord. So I don't want to leave you ignorant. I want to leave you with knowledge, information, and wisdom. The difference between the rich and the poor is information. Let's get some information so that we can become rich. Praise the Lord. Don't, don't get religious on me now. You got to be rich in the spirit first before you can be rich in the natural. Praise the Lord. All right, then. In the Greek, the word Jesus, write this down, the word Jesus has significance, meaning. It comes from the Greek from the Greek, from the, from the name of Joshua, Joshua. So Jesus, the name Jesus comes, I thought he was Hebrew, listen to me. Comes from the Greek, form of the name Joshua. Joshua, which means the Lord saves. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. So I say, so I say, <laughs> Jesus saves. And when you say that, what you're saying boldly, what you're saying is the Savior, Joshua. Yeshua, Jesus, Savior, saves. The Greek word Yeshua, Jesus, means the Lord saves. Yeshua, the Lord saves. Yeshua. Everybody say it with me. Yeshua. Yeshua, the Lord saves. And it means Jesus. Jesus, that word contains, listen, 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 you got to receive it now, and I appreciate your spirit listening to your pastor now. There's a transformation taking place right now, I feel it in the spirit myself. That word contains more power, more hope, more love, did you get it? Power, hope, 
love, then all the other world, words in the world combine. Power, hope. That's why when you're in distress, you need to ask them. Save me with your right hand. Pick me up from this quicksand. I feel I'm drowning. Write the letter. Not only when you need something, but show appreciation. Go to the spiritual pharmacy and get a card and write it out to him and tell him, thank you for being my shelter in the time of the storm. Thank you for saving me even when I didn't know what you were doing. When I felt all alone, when I felt they were coming against me, when I felt no one understood me, you were there with your right hand, praise the Lord. You've given me power, hope, and love. I wish I had somebody that had the Holy Ghost in here. Who am I talking to here, praise the Lord? God's people or the world? Amen. So that word contains so much power, hope, and love. Then all the words in the world combine. That's why the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The Lord saves. It's saving. It is a saving power. Come on, write it down. The name, it is a saving power. That gives me hope and love. And I need to cry out to him. And you need to cry out to him. You need to tell him, thank you for being my shelter in the time of the storm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, he did it again. <laughs> I, already got, I already got two verses <laughs> this time again. Boy, this 15, the exit of 15 is really good, isn't it? Why right, well, we can't even get out of this thing? How long have we been on this? Like two weeks, three weeks? It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. we're learning though, right? We're learning. We're moving forward. Praise the Lord. We're leaving different than how we come in. Praise the Lord. So the Lord's right hand represents what? It's a symbol. It's a symbol. Now you know. The right hand. That's why. Where's Jesus sitting at? At the right of the, of the Father. And we just read in, uh, what was it? Isaiah what? Let's go there again, then we'll close up. Isaiah 41, help me please. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> Amen, thanks, Pat. 41, 13, let's go there. <laughs> Dude, I got to go there again. There you go. I got it. Everybody's there? Amen. Amen, thank you. For I hold you by your right hand. Wow. So from here on, from now on, see what I just said? He switched it on me. I said, from here on. And he said, no, from now on. Once again, you're always in your now. Write that, please. We're going to renew this mind. You're always in your now. Why, why, why I got to be thinking about all everything else but what I need to be thinking about? I'm in my now. <clears throat> I can't be thinking about what happened to me yesterday. It's gone. Now I need to do what I need to do now. And I can't do nothing about it now, so I'll do it Monday or I'll do it tonight. You get it? You got to learn how to move in your now. Come on, somebody. Move in your now. Look, 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 look what I'm doing. You want to receive? Be in your now. Do you want to receive? Be in your now. If you're not in your now, you can't receive. Because you're not in your now. 
So when you're not in your now, the only thing that's happening, all kind of stuff is being released out of you that is not good. Where is anxiety? You know, you ain't got no business thinking about none of that stuff. Praise the Lord. You have no business thinking about none of that stuff. You got a little pain in the back. Oh, God, maybe I got hook of attack at the book of Lumaka. And I said, what? what is that? Oh, somebody said I had it. Did God say you have it? <laughs> Why are you listening to that kuba de paka? I can't, what is a kuba de paka de paka de paka? You don't even know. Come on, Rory. You know I'm right. You don't even know what the heck it is. And he just said, oh, they say I have it. Get in your now. And let the right hand of God remove you from that experience. And then, now remember the, assign, the assignment he gave us, instruction. We're going to write him a letter. And if we can't write a letter, let's get him a postcard. And we're going to seal it, uh, a, a card. Put it in the envelope, seal it. Put it away in your secret place or wherever you have your body. Put it in your body. Don't open it for seven days. After seven days, open it up. Oh, I feel his presence. Okay, this is an instruction the Holy Spirit is giving you. Let's be obedient. Remember, he is the one, what? He's the one with his, with his unfailing love. He's the one leading us. Praise the Lord. With his unfailing love, he's the one leading us. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 41, 13. For I hold you by your right hand. I, comma, I, comma, the Lord your God. For I say to you, comma, don't be afraid, period. I am here to help you. Somebody say, I receive it. I In Jesus' name, I receive it. Thank you. Well, viewers, time is up. Praise the Lord. Allow the Father's right hand and his arm to give you strength, and to deliver you from whatever you're going through. In Jesus' name. And remember, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Hey, all right. Thank you.